Hey guys, welcome to the to the Rel 10D 10E recap. We missed week two, but we got you with week two and three in this one. I'm joined by the master of iron. That's me. And if you call him by any other name, you're lame. Well, no, I'm the big rat lackey, of course. He, he, he's you know what? I am. Everywhere. I'm also a supporter of the big rat. The best inducement for Skaven. Exactly. If you don't believe in Big Rat, we'll hunt you down. Well, I'm also probably the the most hardcore supporter of a Rat Ogre start on Skaven, so... Yep. So I don't know if my opinion on Big Rat counts. And I'm pretty sure this is a Skaven versus uh, Orc team right here. And it's starting in a 1-1. And it seems it wasn't played. No, it was a... It was an admin draw. That's kind of lame. Well, now that I'm already sad to start this off, let's go see the rest. With Abysmal Cups versus Adventuring Elites. Ending in a 0-0 zero, zero here. And just, uh, just Nurgle and Undead doing their thing, not caring about the ball. No, I mean, there's no point to it, right? But right, uh, who needs We can who needs see the ball? one interesting thing is the Nurgle were actually really out-blocking the uh, Undead. Which is usually just odd, yeah. because even though Nurgle have a lot of strength, Undead still have two big guys to play around with. What I what I imagine was, was it was it was like zombies basing Nurgle warriors or something, and the Nurgle warriors would just punch them down, and the zombies would just get back up the next turn and catch another punch. Yep. Probably not even, As like, you... uh, taking much injuries. Just kind of like no yeah. one nines either. Well, there was only uh, three KOs and one, one casualty on the undead side. There was a death on the Nurgle side. Ooh. I'm pretty sure that's just a rotter, but we'll see. Yeah, it was it was sort of even for like removals and stuff, even though the Nurgle outblocked the the undead. But the undead does have mighty blow, so Yep, the regen was good, so I mean it says the regen's good, so I'm not sure if the death is actually fake or not. Who who knows? Oh wait no that's for the adventuring elites, never mind. Yeah, since there's no regen, that's probably just a dead rotter. Yeah. Well, we can move on to the next game. Hogwarts and Chorf, Chorf, Chorf. Did you like that clap? Yep. Because that's, that's how I felt seeing this score. Nearly headless Nick grabbing the MVP. Yep. Necro beating Chorfs. I think that game could go either way if the, if the claw for Necro does things. Yeah, if the claw for Necro works out, that's definitely like a Necro game. But I mean, if the Chorfs just get the ghouls and snatch them well, up, I'm, I'm not even I'm sure looking if it's a ghouly uh, necro team or not. I'm looking at it right now, and the Chorfs did massively outblock the necro and removed three more people. Two of them were casualties. Yeah, that's where you always got to check if it's the regen. Nope, regen was over too, so he was just dealing with low uh, numbers the whole time. It seems. Yeah. Ko's were eh too. So Hogwarts is just probably doing some good positioning and getting in the way with zombies and just scoring it and then maybe stealing and scoring. That's about it for that. Yeah. Some nice SVP got, around though. And then we got the fling, one of the fling teams taking another loss here to the Crypt Lords 2 Boogaloo. It really hurts my heart to see flings lose. And they broke armor more than the, uh, this is a Necro team as well, correct? Yep. So, yes. we got the 40 blocks to the 34 blocks, with the Flings having more. Five KOs and two injuries versus just two injuries. And this just seems yeah. like, you know, even with all that, uh, removal power, just nothing happened with the Flings. Like, it just seems like... It's just flings like just not having the strength to utilize the uh, the man advantage they got this game. Plus the chaos were coming back like nothing, so could yeah, be the issue. That could be an issue, yeah. Okay, we can move on to a game. I don't think are you gonna comment on this? Might get fired from your clan. Do you say the yep. wrong thing here? Uh, five out of one punch ogre winning it all, and we'll move on. <laughs> But no, let's let's take a look. And let's check who got all the SVP. Ravenous Dawn. Now, I was just told that this was just a blitzer. Pretty much just bullying the ogres. Just blodge 
Oh. He was just going, taking ball, going away. I saw that it was like even some scatter catches that he should not have gotten. And then all the passes in the world that he could have wanted. Uh, lots of injuries, lots of KOs. Just SP people lose for High Elves. Which, I can at least say, High Elves are very deserving of SPP, so... Let's see. We had over 60... Or, we had 69 successful boneheads. Just fun stats there. Lots of them. Just lots of world. Nice. Well, that's about... Yeah. It's just a bit higher than what you expect. A yep. few more boneheads than what you would expect to, to succeed. Yeah. Just... It baffles me just how many dice the Ogres actually had to roll there. And a lot was just armor. <laughs> Yeah. Armor and dodges. I don't think I've seen a game with 50 successful dodges yet. But that's not oh, yeah. So there was lots of dice being chucked there. And very angry. Kindly. Well, that was the that was the uh, the high elves doing the dodges. The ogres only did only did 16 dodge rolls. Wait. The high elves are the ones that did 50 dodge rolls. What? That makes sense, though, dodging away from ogres every I think turn. I looked at both, and that's where I got the 50 dodges. But still, that's yeah. that's a lot. That is a lot. Yeah, but that makes a lot more sense now. <laughs> I'm just looking yeah. at it, like, that's a lot of dice rolled for these teams, man. It's because of both of them together. Anyway, let, let's move on to that 5-0 uh, slaughter. To the Mordheim Cryptors and the Mighty Morphin Dinosaurs Gang of the 1-1. <laughs> I think this was just neither team really got that big of a man advantage, so they both just scored on their drive. They both had exactly 50% ball possession, which makes me feel like they picked up their ball turn one of each drive and then just scored turn eight. Yeah, that sounds about right. Like, they just walked it up. Literally just a one-turn difference of when they had the ball in the other's half. And they yeah. scored. And relatively just even everything. Even though the Mordheim Cryptors got a little bit extra damage done with less blocks. Well, that's just, that's just Claw. That's just Claw from the Necro team doing stuff, maybe. Yeah, Claw and hitting Skeeks, probably. Yeah. And then just with all the AB8 on Necro, it was just like, eh. It was pr pretty close on blocks, yeah. I think it was just the AB8, the, uh, the Claw doing stuff that really just helped the Necro tie that game. Not get completely outbashed. Just, and then we can just we can just skip this last game of the week. We don't need to look at that. Yep, week week three. Here we come. No, I'm just kidding. We're we're going in, delving in, seeing what's been done, and that the boss hog outlaws a turf team went three zero against some flings. Poor guys. And it's a real real shocker, hey. Yeah. Flings lost. Psh, what's that? Yeah, like that should never happen. Flings are a tier first, one team. Come on. Ver first thing you'll see. Is they only got thirty-two blocks, nine of them removed people. Yeah, that, that's a bit insane. And there was only fourteen breaks, so nine out of fourteen well, that, is a bit higher than it should be just on that. Uh, and that was, that was about that was about half the total blocks. So now was he hitting a lot with Mighty Blow? Uh, no. I don't think he even had a Mighty Blow on his team. Yeah, that that's a bit uh bit of a swing and dice then. But he was getting a lot of hits on AB6, so who knows? Yeah, who knows? But we can even see that your stand-up rolls sucked. And you had to make a lot of them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just look at all that grossness. You even threw a fireball at him. How'd that work out? I think the fireball was just awful. But I think uh, this is the game where I had already lost, but I chucked a I chucked a halfling like he scattered like halfway across the field and hit a bowl down to stop to stop him from going. I think it it slowed down the third touchdown. I think, which in turn did the fourth. Yeah, that must have been a fun time. Oh Just yeah, screw it. <laughs> Hopefully, you didn't level up any. Uh... Full centaurs as one gets the MVP. I see. Yeah, well, we can move on to week three now. Week three, yeah. Where we got Torf 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 versus Playum. And this one one, one draw. Like it actually got played. Yeah. Lots of armor breaks both ways. Like, that's a lot. Not 
nine removals for the Chorfs, I feel like that was just Skaven doing Skaven things and just being able to run the ball across the field in one turn. Yeah, just it was basically a two turn score and then just kept it away from his end zone. And the Chorfs were just yeah. hammering Skaven. Yeah. Just hammering him. It's a lot of blocks. And I want you to note that they both did a pass and a catch. And I'm pretty Ooh. sure that it was a uh, fun little play from Chorf, Chorf, Chorf to get a uh, little BS touchdown in the end there. Let's move on. Actually, I gotta go check what that Torf had. I can't just not look at it. He got guard. I do like Smitey though. And then bad level or bad MVP on the other one. Anyway, and then there's a... crushers versus the adventuring elites. It's a uh, halflings outbash the uh, undead, but the undead got more removals, of course. Got the two nil. You know, this seems to be like a common occurrence for the uh, Cupcake Crushers. They're really getting the damage. They just can't get the ball up. Yeah. And they failed four of their five throw teammate attempts. Failed three out of the four landings. Okay, that's pretty horrible. Just in any kind of way. Ooh. He also went, had Zara. Went 50% on stabs, yeah. And there's four of those, so that's interesting. And then failed his one going for it. <laughs> okay, we had some interesting ha stuff happen here, it seems. But it seems like he was punching and stabbing with Zara, which is probably the best way to do it. Yeah. And but then, uh... The elites were just capitalizing on playing flings and got their own injuries and made their own SVP. Yeah. So up next, we have the first and Forsaken Lions... Beating the green skin gut splitters one nil. Yeah. Now it's not as not as crazy as the week before, but I think this. Oh, it was just they only had the ball for eighteen percent of the game, so I think it was just steal the ball, run quick down and score, or right at the start of their drive, really push it for two or three turns. Yeah, it was just, it was probably your typical one one, or sorry one zero, where you block one team, then you get your score and you block them again. It's that I think the orcs were probably too strong for the high elves to really deal with effectively, besides just stalling out. Yeah. So we all know orcs just don't get places fast. I mean, and I would I would just like to point out for one one second here that the high elves outbash the, the orcs. More yeah. blocks, more armor breaks. I mean more more removals. It just happens, you know? And yeah. more passes. So the high elves yeah. were just making out like bandits on this. And I'm pretty sure it's because yeah. they had their tools that uh, the orcs really don't have anything to deal with just yet. Like a blodge, yeah. whatever the other skill was on that uh, blitzer that got some levels after the ogre game. So he's just a bit too developed. And then we have a really developed lineman that's just a bit too developed. 
Yeah, okay, so we're moving on to the next game here. Another tie for the uh, Mighty Morphin Dinosaurs and the Nurgle. Yeah. They're the Mighty Morphin Tyosaurs. Pretty sure. Which? Mighty, Mighty Morphin Reptilian Creatures. It's a 1-1 one, 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 one draw. They both have the ball same amount of time. And removals were pretty similar, besides just two injuries for the Abysmal Cup while uh, the dinosaurs got the five KOs instead. Oh. But, yeah, just not really too, too great on the uh, SVP front for Ooh, the dinosaurs. I'm Abysmal seeing Cups two down. casualties sustained for Abysmal Cuss. So mm. I'm assuming... Well, no, that that's... They, they inflicted two. So the Mighty Morphin Dinosaurs got hit. Oh, uh, look at the look at the back there. Two casualties sustained and five KOs for Abysmal Cusp. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. Would that be just That's failed like... dodges or GFIs or something? I, I that wouldn't think it is. Because fouls show under inflicted. It does. So I, I think, think that's just like failing players for them. That's just failing dice. Probably rotters that just fail dice. Yeah, that sounds about right. Looks like a typical just like bashy matchup at the start. One both score in each of their halves. Which looks pretty similar to what the uh the next game on the list is. A one one draw between the boss hog outlaws and Hogwarts. Mm -hmm. Again, two two bashy teams that seem to have just you know, classic one one tie. Both score on their drive. And both, both get awesome MVPs. Um, quite a bit more removals this game than in the last one, though. Five injuries inflicted from the Boss Hog Outlaws and four injuries inflicted from Hogwarts. Is that more injuries than he got on you? That is... Uh, well, I can, I can just go take a look here real quick. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. That is the exact same amount as he inflicted on me. So you're just telling me he's he's rolling up everybody here, it seems. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying, guys, watch out for the boss hog outlaws. Again, this is, just, this, is, this is just a classic bash matchup. 1-1, one, one, both score on their halves, count one turn. I'm pretty sure they were both down players for, like, the whole game, just seeing these. And it's yeah. just funny, 31 blocks, and you get that many removals. But we must have been seeing some fouling in there, too. Cause... Well, yeah, there's there probably a lot of fouling going on. Yeah. And Hogwarts took five Kaz, and Boss Hogs took five Kaz. So, I think they had a trip and hurt someone. And they also tripped and got two KOs. Yeah. So, yeah, no one had was... players there. Yeah. We move on to the next game, which uh, was a was a hard fought battle. Yep, it's it seems uh, you just beat the crap out of them, but you 80, won instead. 80, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of armor breaks. Twice it's, over twice as many blocks for the flings. Yeah, it's just bang, 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 until it works. Yeah. Though interesting enough, like he still gets more casualties on you. And uh, what did you yeah. do with this game? A halfling master chef, deep root, and big old Bertha. Okay, so you're just hitting with all the big guys. I was rocking four big guys that game. You're like a slightly stronger uh, ogre team. Yeah. Look at that. But just lots of hurt things and lots of KOs. It was just I KO'd a lot of his guys and scored. And then threw some flings at him, scored behind his guys. Yeah. Though he's still not going to walk away that sad because he's getting lots of SVP on that werewolf. And he got blocked. Yeah. So it's definitely a nice time. And we do see Cancer did get some agility. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. We can uh, move on to the final game of the week. Where uh, the last game we'll one look punch at this division. It went 2 0, right? I'm reading that right, obviously. No, well, that was exactly what they did. They they won that game. Wasn't even close. Mm -hmm. 
good job overall. It was. It looked. It looks pretty even for removals. Yep. But Mordheim Kreptor is actually getting less blocks, but just since Snotlings break like nothing, got all the injuries and some KOs. But I'm pretty sure they just could actually ball handle while the ogres just got stalled out a bit, and then. Well, the ogres had the ball the for. Ogres had the ball for half the game. Which means, I think, probably both of these touchdowns were... One was probably a two-turn from the Mordheim Crypt Horrors, and then one was probably just, hey, let's pick it up off of the snotling we knocked down and then run it in the next turn. Yep. I mean, overall, though, like I'm pretty sure no one's going to be sad just with all that SPP flying around. Yeah. And one thing died on the Necro team. Ooh. So, that was the thing. Well, I guess we're done with the weeks here. We can go... What teams do you want to cover? What teams do I want to cover? Let's see. I want to see the Boss Hog Outlaws. The Boss Hog Outlaws. With Vulpes... Ah, oh, jeez. With Vulpes in, K... in Kilta. I got it. First try. First try. Didn't even need anything else. And this is how... You build Torfs on the Torfs, and I feel that we're really, you know, keying into the movement of the Bull Centaurs, which I prefer if you're going to do that, you still get a block one, in the fact that you can actually blitz with him reliably, then just need him to move. Yeah. So, it's still not bad, and he's definitely got almost enough money to get that final reroll that he wants, and then just nice, mighty blow Torfs. And I love the yep. turf with the knife in his mouth. It's so good. Hopefully he, uh, maybe he'll snag a double on, on one of those two chores that are on five SPP. Yeah. I mean... I guess he, he ideally wanted on Paul Wall. Yeah, Paul Wall really wants the double. And those two, one of them's probably going to have to pick up guard, and then just I would get yeah. another mighty blow. And then, then just classic first skills on both centaurs, break tackle. You either go break tackle or block, so... Yep. I think you can probably start with either. Yep. This is one team I think that, with how he's starting him, he's probably doing a lot of bull carrying. Just because, yeah. like, if you're taking the break tackle, you're probably making them a carrier for, like, your first while until they can get block and then do what they're actually supposed to do. Yeah. He's got a lot of money, probably just saving up for that last re-roll there. So, just needs to get a little bit more there. Overall, though, he's, he's doing pretty good. Still only, still only has human cheerleaders, so... Yeah. So bad. But he's got one no. win and two draws so far. And a pretty bright future ahead of him, I can see. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty good record for early on. Because you're not really... Yeah, you're still gaining really points every game. To start. Like, it's once they finally got to the 1200, 1400 range. Is that when, that's when uh, Charps pick up, truly. Yeah. I believe last week we looked at RK Blaze's High Elves, and mm -hmm. was it Plagum we looked at? The Skaven team? I think it was. Probably. Okay. Because I think we should look at these Mighty Morphin Dinosaurs for the second team this week. The Mighty Morphin Tyosaurs. Let's go check them out. And there's only one level, but he has an extra skink. Yep. So There's a decent just spread of a pretty good uh, team, just kind of flipped upside down. Which I mean, it works. He yeah. still has them organized, De so it's cool. Decent spread of SPP. Definitely a decent spread. Like MVP on a Saurus feels good. MVP on a Skink not so good. Level on a Skink, you're probably okay. you're probably gonna want to maybe if you get if you get the ball and you're sort of safe in like in one of the halves, you might try to hand off to one of those five SPP Saurus to go for a touchdown. I mean, or you just throw your pass. Or you just pass yeah. from one to the other and then back. Mm -hmm. Like, look at that. That would be two leveled source. Anyway, two leveled source. These guys definitely turns. should also Easy. be taking their LOS blocks. Like, if you want to get a level and, like, sneak it in through there, just be blitzing with them. Be hitting with them. It's not like they're, un like, uh, like any worse than hitting with any other. And you just have a shot yeah. at leveling up every time. And the, uh, and the catch catch skink makes me think he's just gonna go for like he'll, he'll sort of leave him on the other side of the pitch you know go for that like quick handoff play up in the end zone 
Yeah, that definitely means you're a sideline switcher if you're going to take a catch for skink first, or you're doing one yeah. counts. Yeah. But I do think he needs some side like, step too on here. I like that on a uh, on a team with some very fast players, you have one sort of hangout like near the other side, just so that way if you get too clogged up, you can just run back to safety on the other side with the ball. Yep. And Lizards are definitely one of those teams that can do it, but you just have to do it with a lot of skinks and like Asaurus on the other side. And that's the only scary part. Yeah. Yeah. But you nice. just try to not have all your Saurus get tied up. It's pretty good. With three he draws, is... decent money rolls, it seems. That he has a Croxagore now. And he's just going to be a bit expensive because of having the extra player. And yeah. already and three... all the uh, Lizard stuff. That he three draws is, is fairly good. Especially for early Lizards where you're just succumbing to one and nines. Yep, it's one and nine central. And then I think he was down at Croxagore, so it was also losing some strength there. But he's been doing yeah. pretty good. Anyway, that's our two for this time. So let's move on to the 10E. Whoa, we gotta, so we we gotta go predict, predict like a week four game or two. Oh, you're right. I, I totally Come forgot. Come on. I am just incompetent, don't you know? That's my That's my true ability. Anyway, yeah, we're back on the schedule screen over here. We got so I, versus the mighty Morphin Tyosaurus. So before we go over every game, we're gonna, how about we each go over one game? What game do you think will be the one to watch this week? Uh, besides my clan leaders game, you know, I want to see the fling off. Let's be real the here. Fling, I want to see showdown and shenanigans and the lack of rerolls. It will be a fairly epic game. I'm going to be getting about 100k in inducements. Ooh. So you're basically getting the chef and hoping for the best? Yeah. And his his fling team is a little little maimed over there. So anyway. I'm hoping I can just out-remove him. What's your and then I think... Week? I think the game to watch... Of course, will be plague them in the mighty morphin dinosaurs because I'm hoping those lizards get their first win of the season this week. Man, that's what I was gonna say, but rats definitely have the matchup advantage there if they can just get yeah. around and hit skinks. If the saurus can get some good removals going, I think the lizards have that one. Also, let's remember that there's a new uh, Croxigore, so my new blow is gonna be starting to kick into effect there. <laughs> As long as he's not, like, the doctor or whatever. But there is going to be a wizard yeah. for the Skaven side in uh, Inducements. Yeah. So that's going to be the only downside if he doesn't cut anything from his roster. Which I wouldn't. Yeah. His, his roster is good right now, but just dealing with the Wiz here is going to not be so fun. No. Okay, well, we can move on to Tenny now. Yay. The teeny div. Oh, Let's course. do the schedule and bring that back one. I do see right off the bat on the schedule, Larkstar taking a win against the Northshire Nobodies, yep. the other halfling team. Just, it was brutal. Just look at the Ember Breaks. 17 to 3. Oh, yeah. One more, one more here. 17 to 3. When you're not getting removals as halflings, just, it's horrible. And with 17 North... blocks, only one a turn, basically. So first yeah, thing minutes. I'm noticing here, Northshire nobodies only rolled two take roots. Oh. oh so no. I'm thinking what what happened was a tree got removed turn one. That or is... in the first two turns, and then the other tree took root off the bat and then maybe got removed in the second half because i don't understand how you because there's only one failure there so unless one got removed i think i heard something from larkstar in that like one was ko'd and i think the other was injured from a foul and then just absolutely fling domination just happened in that there were seven injuries inflicted in two ko's just against the other flings and just Brutal, yeah. brutal, brutal dice. 
Yeah. So anyway, uh, next like, game. Larson. I think we should be a pretty good coach. Just he capitalized yeah, so hard on it. He's dominating the division. Yeah. So I think we should try to get through this div maybe a little faster. What are we going for like thirty minutes now? Yep, yeah, we're good. Still going. And we have the Empire Funny. Chads versus Cancel Anthrax. Whoa, you just jumped over a game, sir. Did I? Sorry. All my, All elves, my died. elves died. Versus the purebred. Orcs, orc, orcs just out bashing high elves. Just we saw the opposite of we saw the opposite of this in the other division where the high elves out bash the orcs. Yeah. I was gonna say that. Exact thing. Yeah. Looks but like they just got it. a few removals, a lot of blocks. He was just trying to show him the love of how all of his elves died, you know? Yeah, you just wanted to, uh, just want to let the pure purebred patricians understand that all of his elves died, so you, sh you they should all die too. Okay, now it's the Empire of Chads versus Cancel Anthrax. This was just this was just Amazons being Amazons and beating the the ogres. Yeah, it's it's a really aggravating matchup. I can tell you from experience as ogres. You just well, like, the ogres I can't do anything. The ogres aren't going to be sad about that one. There was uh, there was a lot of uh, SPP being thrown out of. Yeah, it's it's definitely a lot of SPP when you actually get pals and he killed two people. Like holy crap! But still, just he had no ball possession and pretty much was probably just not able to play as he wanted Ooh. to. There was more bone. There was one more bonehead roll thrown this game than the uh, than that one ogre game in the other division. I guess so, yeah. That, that's the other cool. one had 69 successes and 14 failures. So there's one more here. Yeah, and he's more successful. Em Empire of the Chads asserting his dominance. Yeah, there was lots of ogre activity. He was ogre loading. Yeah. There we go. Now with bad pun out of the way, let's continue. Yeah, we it can jump on into... Sentence to death versus unknown strain. In which Nurgle just stopped Skaven from scoring and did things. Nurgle got six removals. Yeah, that, I that suspect they just. Anybody. I think they just stopped the Skaven score on the first on the first half or whatever, and then just slowly brought it in for the rest of their half, making sure they didn't give up any openings or anything. Just the slow grind down. Yeah. Plus, looking in here, there was some foul appearances failed and a tentacles failed. And Ooh. just some casual stuff to fail, but it adds up when you're having to spend your uh, chia, or your rerolls for it. Yeah. So that's a bit of a sad thing. And then just that that uh, Beast Nurgle was really smart. Like, really smart. Really smart, yeah. And then a good regen. Oh, and then we have the... Up next, we have another Bloody Bell and Full Monty squaring off. Norse against Skaven. You know, I have to say, this is how you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to be getting, like, higher score stuff for your, like, starting seasons. Just so you actually get the build-up and development you really want. Yeah. And you can see that couple of here. A two-heads vermin. Or, sorry, gutter runner. And just 42 blocks for another bloody bell, which is quite odd, because I'm pretty sure Full Monkey's supposed to getting all the blocks. Though it's yeah. pretty equal in, uh... The KO's injuries department. Yeah. That was just that was just Skaven probably scored quick. Norse returned the favor. Norse probably took it slow in their drive and then Skaven just did a one turn at the end. No, I feel like the Skaven probably just they took about four turns scoring and got a lot of blocks there and started getting removals. And then just yeah. like they scored and then Full Monty couldn't really capitalize after going down some players, but then still got some. And then it went from there. Yeah, it's another possibility. But there is four touchdowns. And that's pretty good. With a good SPC so, spread. So we can just skip the next game, right? We don't need to look at that one. Yeah, just, you know. Nah, nah. Rumblebee's cool, because now he has a Toucan Hindus, and it's all good. Because it, sort of, it sort of hurts me a little bit to see Rumblebee getting a win. Yeah, but I mean, it's against Torf, so it's like fair, right? Yeah. I guess if there was a game we wanted him to win this season, it would be against Schwarz. It would be against Zons, though. And that'll lead into next week, once you see that. 
Yeah. Anyway, let's go down one more, and we'll see True Necromance versus the Animal Flip. This is just True Necromance, a necro team, just doing necro things. Just seems like definitely more blocks here, and lots of injuries. More blocks. And I think that was a snowball. Yeah. That's a bit of a bummer for the Liz, but they managed to seem that they came out okay. Even an MVP on the yeah. Crocs. First, first thing I'm looking at, the Crocs got removed because mm. he only rolled three boneheads. Yeah, sounds about right. And then he also got and an he, MNG for his troubles. And he failed two of the three boneheads he rolled. Now that hurts. Yeah, he really deserved it then. Yeah. Probably like the last one that he actually makes. He comes up and just gets hit once and then... Oh! Oh, oh I see how the Necro won this game. Nine failed KO rolls for the Lizards. Oh, no. Oh, no. God! That, that'll shut down any team. Oh, no. That That's just... That's wrong on so many levels. So yeah. many levels. I can't... I could not fathom being in that situation. Oh my god. Oh yeah. It hurts just looking at it. And the dodges too. I'm not sure if he was Soros dodging, but I mean... That's a whew. Yeah. I yeah, think that's enough looking at those stats. That hurt me. Why did you make me look at that? Uh, let's, let's move on to week three, where it probably went better. We don't we don't really need to talk about the first game, like that's just expected. Some chores beating up some halflings after they got beat up by uh Yeah. By uh Lark No, that's that's something you don't see every day. Identical amounts of blocks for both teams. Yeah, I know, right? And then the halflings and that's, also got That's not a lot of blocks either. That's that's only what, uh thirteen blocks a half or something? Yeah. Like, that's, that's not a lot. That's all your blitzes, and then, like, plus one every turn. Oh, some flings KO'd themselves as well, is what I'm seeing here. Yeah, probably dodge it, or just speed you throw. Which, yeah. throwing your flings is actually really good for getting them killed. Fun fact. Yeah. Well, actually, he passed all three throw teammates, and then he proceeded to fail too. all three landings. So he went... <laughs> <laughs> so he, flat, flat, flat. he was unstoppable at throwing, but oh, once it came to the flings trying to land, that's where that's where they drew a line. Yeah, but, I mean, and then the next game, is, like no, nothing to scoff at when you don't fail a single one. Yeah, that's not much. And then the next game there, just unplayed. We can look over that one. Yeah, that's what lizards against war. No, lizards that's against Norse. Norse, Norse. yeah. yeah. So. And then, uh, and then we have Strain versus True Necromance. Nurgle out bashing Necro. Now, remember how I picked Unknown Strain as the one to take it all? Yeah. Look at this. See, they are beating everybody. And they are 3 0 0 right now. Or cheerleaders makes you win games, man. Yeah. And I think this was just Nurgle had more strength than the Necro, and they just managed to pull it out. Yeah. Maybe those those warriors and the beasts just like shut down the necro on their drive, and then the Nurgle managed to break through on their drive. Yep, and it seems that the regen was one for three on this uh, necro team. So they must have lost a couple people in the fight, and yeah. some riders were gone for the unknown strain. Yeah, that looks looks just like how it went down. But just the two o grind or two one grind and. That was how it worked out. Yeah, Let's I think we can move on to... Cool. No, he hasn't rolled Did he? Oh, that's lame. Maybe so that white doesn't that. exist then. No. And then... Uh, oh, we can go to the next game, which I am so disappointed in Rumblebee right now. Yeah, you remember I... what I was saying about, like, he... beating Zons? He was supposed to be the team that shut down the Amazons. Him and, like, the Chorps were supposed to be the ones that could actually do damage to them this season. He got yeah, 11 he got armor breaks. breaks. He got the blocks, too. But I think that was just Rumble being being Rumble and being bad, you know, not rolling well. 
Because everybody knows to win at this game, you just have to get good and roll sixes. Yeah, it's not that hard. I mean, he only walked out with nine SDP. Like, come on. So I also, what I also am noticing here is that the dwarves threw a pass that was intercepted by the Zons. That's a feels bad man moment. Right? That could just be how it ended. Dwarves rolling passes and then Zons catching it. This wasn't even his only time throwing a pass. He threw multiple passes and failed some. Yeah. Just horrible. That just that just looks like the the Zons just outplayed Rumblebee. What is it? It's uh Zoot Grizzoot is the uh, coach of Zons. Yeah, he just outplayed Rumblebee. Which I mean. Oh, there was an intercept both ways that could have happened too. Oh, nice. Note. Yeah, I, I mean, think it was just... The good thing Rumblebee just, is at, uh, doing is rolling GFIs, because he is 9 for 10. Ooh, nice. Look at that. But yeah, it was just Zoot outplayed Rumble. I mean, I think we all would have seen that coming. Yeah, I certainly would have seen that. But then anyway. we can move on to the next game. High Elves against Skaven, the purebred patricians against another Bloody Bell. In which high these elves, high elves bash the crap out of these guys. Out bashing five removals. And it's they, just, oh, look at the blocks. They actually took 12 removals. <laughs> Wait, what? What? No, there's eight removals from the high elves. Skaven took another four. They took another two casualties and two KOs of and their the high own elves volition. took one, one injury. Yeah. And the Hiles oh, yeah. only had one more block. That was just armor value 7 caving in. Also, there was expulsions here. So, with two expulsions for High Elves, they were just finishing off the rest of the rats. Well, they just, they went up because the, the rats just, like, removed themselves for a little bit. So they just went up and could just keep putting on that pressure. Yep. And then just looking at the SVP spread, it's just dirty. As they yeah. turn into evil villains with a uh, thunder backdrop there. I see... I see and the rats were 50% on dodge rolls. You know, they dodge on 3 plus at worst generally. So, I mean, something must have been really, really wrong. Yeah. And they didn't even roll much. Like, this is just a crunch, crunch, crunch. Look at the armor. The armor was literally 50-50 on if it would break or not. Yeah. This is just horrible dice, right? Well, I think with that, we can move on to the next game where Larkstar continues his rampage. He's he's not even trying for the Stunty Cup spot. He's going straight for this the normal playoff spot of the division. Honestly, at this point, he might just get it. He beats Skaven 2-1. Let's see here. Let's Look see here. He got KOs. he took he took Zara. Yes, he is a stab guy. Mm -hmm. He uh about like average sort of take root fails. Cr Completed a throw teammate, failed the landing. Classic halflings. Yep. Meanwhile, sentenced to death, just uh, did Lots fairly good on dodges. They just, they just got, they got a little out blocked and uh, got removed. Twelve KOs sustained by the rats. Yep. That, that sounds so that, fair, right? Actually, Magnus. Not a single Kaz, you know? Yeah. What job yeah. Magnus? Well, I think okay, with that, we can move on to the last yep. game. Which is the orcs just beating up ogres. These pretty ogres. even on pretty even on blocks. Sort of even on breaks. removals, in a way. But, I mean, the chads are just getting injuries, though. It's the big difference here. Yeah. I mean, I would be pretty mad if I only got one KO and one injury against Ogres. Think about it. You got all these Snotlings, and you get one KO and one injury on them, and he takes one extra KO after that point. So I do see... Three Kaz. I do see one issue with this whole Ogre strategy here. Is he only made one throw teammate attempt that he failed. Yeah. That's kind of like what you just deal with. But he was, he was average on bonehead rolls, like... It wasn't too bad. I think this was just orcs also out bashing. Didn't get an intercept, you know, he missed it. Yeah, this was just this was just orcs out bashing ogres. Is how that went down. 
Yeah. I mean, Dorix at least gave him some SVP back, so it's all good. Yeah. And then with that, what teams do you want to cover this week? Okay, let's look around. And hmm. I want to cover that uh, halfling team of uh, the other one that was the uh, Northshire Nobodies. Yep, Northshire Nobodies. But I can't find where their team is. Oh, it's right in the middle. I'm blind. But, uh, RJ Carrot, the coach. Exactly. It's just just some trees and some unnamed halflings. Yeah. You probably you probably wanted one of those MVP keys to land on a tree sort of I mean open. it's not going to happen when you have a roster of 15 right Yeah. I mean he should probably actually fire one halfling and I do mean one yeah. halfling so he can actually induce him like I wouldn't even hate just tossing out number 13 or like number 4 like number 4 is just even though he'll keep your ordering you'll make it seem like you lost one because he was missing next game so he'll miss every game now yeah. Don't you dare ever try to recover ever again. And then one thing yeah, to know, I... it's 200k bank. And he doesn't even I have think... the He might be thinking, do I grab the third reroll? You know, I he would might... choose the Nuffle Stadium over the third reroll, because then might... you just, you grab your chef every time, right? Because I think he's probably pondering what enhancement to get, or if he wants that third reroll. One thing to note here is he is a break tackle tree kind of guy. Me personally, I prefer like grab first on him. Because instead of having to move to people or get out of somewhere, because they'll root up and all the time. That's why I take grab, grab instead and just move them around. Grab is the smart play. Pile on is the correct play. <laughs> oh man. If you had jump up. If you had jump up, I could see it. If you... If somebody, that's not me, I will never take pile on on a tree. If somebody in one of these divisions, one of the other three halfling teams, if one of them takes pile on on a tree, I will, I don't know, what will I do? I'll buy you a $1 steam. You realize you're one of the three, right? There's, there's three others besides me. Okay. Gotcha. There's two in this division and then one in the other one. Yeah, if any of you any of you guys take pile on on a tree, I will I will buy you a two dollar Steam game. Ooh, we're, we're going up places. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's how much I have in my Steam wallet right now. Oh man. So get pile on on your trees today. Who do you want to check out? No. I think I just we haven't taken a look at. Did we take a look at another Bloody Bell? I think we did. Because we looked, I think we looked at Rumblebee's team. And then I think we looked at the High Elf team. Mm, that could have been it. We, we really like the High Elf. Or we looked at, I think we may have looked at the Ogre team. I think we should look at another Bloody Bell. Okay. Another Bloody Bell of being beat up. Another oh. bloody game. These are just not rats that live, you know? No. That's just that's just a fired roger and you don't replace him. Yeah, let's see. Feels bad. Minus movement makes him awful. The only good thing about the ogre is his mobility. I Juggernaut's alright. I think personally you should go break tackle first though, on a on a roger. Yeah, it's definitely one of those things that needs to move, but I see uh, Juggernaut because you're just avoiding your 1 and 9. Juggernaut's good. My only issue with Juggernaut is you're yeah, using blitz. him You're using him wrong if you ha if you go Juggernaut first. Because if you go Juggernaut, that means your plan is to blitz with him a lot. You do not want to blitz with the Rat Ogre a lot. Yeah, it's just the Rat to Ogre, move him onto people and then take hits occasionally. The Rat Ogre is you blitz him into an area where there's two or three guys so that he can sort of keep them tied up. And then you just throw normal punches with him for the rest of the game. Your Storm Vermin should be doing most blitzes for the entire game. Yeah, I'd say about 60% of your blitzes should be the Storm Vermin. And the and I can also, be putting the Rat Ogre back in spot. I also really like Break Tackle because now all of a sudden... 
you have this massive cage breaking threat if you want to. Yeah. Because he will break a cage. uh, He breaks a cage on a four plus. He'll have your ball carrier getting ready to punch. I know that my rad ogres tend to like maybe once every like two or three games will get a decent shot on the ball for a break tackle play and it'll work. It'll work if you put faith in your rat ogre, which is why you give him break tackle. Yep. I like to go break tackle, then juggernaut. If you're going to use him as more of a cage-breaking threat. Yep. I mean, you either go, if you get break yeah, tackle and you roll doubles, would you take dodge? I, I would not. I'd take pro. Hmm, that's, that's I'd take pro... Take pro over block if I took if it was for a second level and I had already taken break tackle. Do you wanna know why? Because then you can reroll everything. Cage break in. Mm-hmm. You can you can get at that ball easier with pro. Well if you're going for cage breaking, that's why I was saying if you get dodge, that is just always automatic and it really synergizes with your break tackle. Yeah. But the thing is, dodge would be only for that, whereas pro is good for everything. Pro is good just for moving him if he fails a wild animal. Mm-hmm. That's quite fair. Any, any remark? But looking at the team like in it. general, let, let's talk about him. Where we have a missing next game, and our thrower is missing next game. And Two then heads. Minus, AB, or minus MA lineman, which is okay. Two heads, got a runner, you go wrestle on that, you go wrestle strip or wrestle tackle, whatever you want. I also, I don't enjoy block block on Sil- Sylvester there. I like to run. My first two gutter runners will get wrestle first. Mm-hmm. They will be my two sackers. The next gutter runner will be a ball carrier, and then the third gutter runner will just turn into whatever the heck I feel like turning it into. I think on the shiners, I turn mine into a baser. So blodge step, tackle, dive, tackle. tackle. Yeah. And See, then you will I, I usually go uh, wrestle block, wrestle block on them. And then in, in my cases, I usually rolled a uh, plus movement on one. And they just became a one turner. I mean, in the first, if you're doing it, if you're doing it right in the first three, three in the first like three, maybe four games, you'll have four gutter runners leveled up. Yeah, if you have the money, if you're not running all four at once, too. Yeah, because they level up pretty fast on their own. As long as you're getting, like, two scores a game, you're good. I think he's only scoring on gutter runners, which is an issue. Early on, you want to try to score on a Storm Vermin or two. Preferably both. But, I mean, I think he has been trying. It's the problem of everything's crumpling up right now, and I can't deal with it. And especially with this big guy out now, it's just going to be like he really has to play the full agi game rather than any battle. His next game is going to be just try to do gutter runner bullshit. Yeah, I think I can agree with the Rat Ogre just kind of needs to go. That Rat Ogre's dead. My philosophy for Rat Ogres is once they get a minus and a stat, or once they die, you fire them if they're if they're I mean, firmed, and you just never buy another one. Yeah, that's pretty true. I was going to say, you the only be, thing you keep is a minus IG. You will be replacing your linemen and other positionals more often that you're probably never going to save up for a rat ogre, and even if you do reach that point, is it worth 150k for him? Because once you reach that point of being able to buy him back, you're probably going to have a storm vermin or two leveled up, and you're like, ah, I don't need a rat ogre now. Yeah. You just have the reliable I already kill you already, so why even bother? Yeah, because I think the best start for Skaven is a rat ogre start. He's so good early on if you use him right, but you never want to keep him too long. Once your storm vermin get going, he loses most of his utility. Okay. He becomes more of a liability later on, like my rod ogre in in rel. No, no, is you good? You having flashbacks there, bud? I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Okay, let's let, let's move on. Let, let's stop you from uh, keeping on your rod ogre talks. <laughs> started as started as a meme. It was glorious. 
That's how so it yeah, so I think so that's the that's the end of that. We can go take a look at the leaderboard there. We looked at two teams. Larkstar, Zoot, and Boxer. You yeah. I believe two of those were in your top you didn't have the half in, in your uh, top. Three. Yeah, didn't did, weren't you pre, weren't you predicting predicting Zons as well? I thought you did. I predicted Zons, yeah. I didn't I predict Zons. Halflings or Nurgle. I predicted both of those. I'm pretty sure I that believe, those two my three picks right there in 3 0. I believe mine was. I, I predicted one of the Skaven teams. I think it was the Bloody Bell. Yeah. I predicted the Zons. And I believe I predicted the Norse. That could have been it, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, two of your two of your three picks are in the top three right now. I'm super good. Yay. <laughs> yeah, we can we can check in on them every every week, see how they're doing. Yeah. Anyway, I meant to click into the next matches before you know accidentally booting myself out again. So let's look up at the uh, next fights. Yeah. Anything that looks interesting to you? Because oh. I see something that looks interesting to me. I see your two picks that are in the lead going head to head. That's exactly next what I was week. thinking. And those two and I are think, get some uh, amusements too. I think if there was a game, and I'll stand by this, if there was a game for Halflings to win in either of these divisions, it would be against the Nurgle. Mm -hmm. Now, I failed in my attempt to beat Nurgle. But I believe Larkstar and his crazy halflings can beat the Nurgle. I mean, Nurgle's just kind of hard. Like, if you're failing the foul appearances, you're really not getting past them. So, yeah. even though I really do trust in Larkstar's abilities, and he's going to have inducements, I feel that Unknown Strange is just going to be pulling it out just with the Nurgle play and just let's have the fart noises play off all the time. He'll be grabbing. Larkstar will be getting Deep Root. And Chef. And a Chef. So I think he's, I think that's pretty good. That's what I had against the Nurgle in the other division. But I just didn't, didn't have some luck going. Hopefully, if he gets some luck going, I think he can win it. Yep. Anyway, now I got to pick my own one because I decided to let you have that. And I yeah. stole yours, yes. Well, you stole mine in the last, in the last division. I was going to go for the fling off. But the fling offs are fun. <laughs> yeah, they are. Anyway, one I want to see is we're going to see the purebred Patricians against the uh, Castle Anthrax. And I'm going to hope some High Elves can beat up some Zons. That, that's uh, what my hope is. That will be exciting. Because I think, I think High Elves do have a good chance at it. I think the Zons might win that one. Yep. I'm just I, going with the Moomin 8, and the Moomin 8 is on the High Elves. Zoot is a good coach, and I feel he he can beat the High Elves. I think it'll be a close one. Might come down to like a one-turn attempt, but I think he can win it. Yeah. Anyway, that's all of them, ain't it? Yeah, that's all. We've covered both divisions. So, this has been Iron Master, and my lovely co-host, Nosedive. Do you have anything to say here? I know. No? Well, no. that's going to be it. Thanks for watching, guys, and have a good one.